Good afternoon and welcome to the this webinar hosted by Caribbean Evaluators International. My name is Alan Mackey. I'm the Director of Training and Professional Development for the CEI. And the topic today is an introduction to questionnaire testing. The aim of the question of the presentation is to share an understanding of the requirements of validity and reliability testing of survey questionnaires. And to do this, I'm going to uh, use a case study approach. I'm going to tell the story of how my colleagues and I developed survey instruments for an organization called Gideon's Promise. Gideon's Promise trained public defenders to represent uh, those who cannot afford uh, an attorney in the criminal courts. And the organization takes its name from the Supreme Court case of Gideon against Wainwright, in which the United States Supreme Court upheld Mr. Gideon's right to have a public defender uh, in court um, uh, to represent him uh, in criminal proceedings brought against him by the state. So um, we, were, we were asked by Gideon's Promise to develop survey questionnaires that would measure the values-based approach to public defense. Many times when we're evaluating criminal justice interventions or criminal justice matters, we look very much at the process. Uh, we look at the rates of conviction or acquittal, or we look at the severity of the sentence, whether a custodial sentence or a community sentence is imposed. Now, while these things matter very much to Gideon's Promise, they often understand that the types of uh, people that their trained attorneys are representing um, often don't get a fair hearing in the criminal justice system and will often be um, disproportionately convicted and, if convicted, receive a disproportional sentence. And so, what Gideon's Promise Thomas wanted to do was to uh, measure the values-based approach, which was very much based on the medical model of developing a bedside manner. You might be a very good physician and you might know your medicine, but if you can't relate to your patient, if you can't understand their concerns, if you don't listen to them, um, then you might be a poorer physician for that. So how did we go about measuring the values-based approach? Well, we looked at this from the perspective of the public defenders who were trained by Gideon's Promise and the clients that they represented. And we developed two survey instruments, one that was known as the Client Experience Survey and the other that was known as the Defender Values Spectrum Survey. So how did we go about developing these survey instruments? Well, we started by developing Gideon's Promise is theory of change, starting to understand the nature of the intervention that they were giving and why that, that would bring about a change in the practice of the public defenders that they trained, and in turn, why that would have an impact on the uh, defendants that the attorneys represented. And we translated that into a logic model, and from both the theory of change and the logic model, uh, we developed a number of domains that seem to uh, be part of the values-based approach. And from those domains, we began to develop questions to uh, understand the nature of those domains. So here's the universal logic model. Down the left-hand side are the outputs or the activities of Gideon's Promise. Um, they had a number of programs like the Summer Clark program and the Law School Partnership. But the key one was really the Core 101 program, where they took um, new, newly um, barred uh, attorneys who wanted to go into the public defender system and trained them to become values-based public defenders. And they also had other leaderships programs um, and training programs that really impacted on public defender offices. And the combination of this really then begins to have an impact on the on the um, defendant. In the world of public defence, these are called indigent defendants, often because they cannot afford uh, to pay for an attorney, so they get a public 
defender who's appointed by the state. And here you'll see when looking at the outcomes that we were really interested in measuring the values and practices and the confidence of the public defenders who had been trained by Gideon's Promise um, to uh, deliver a values-based um, uh, public defence. And then to look and see how that impacted on the defendant, him or herself, and to see how satisfied they were by that values-based um, approach to their defence and the confidence that they had uh, in their public defender. So having understood the theory of change and developed the logic model, we then could um, uh, discern a number of domains that were strongly related to the values-based public defence practice. And these were certain fundamental values um, that a person might possess, certain values about um, around the, the need to uh, ensure that justice is done, um, the need to be fair and to treat people respectfully, but also uh, four duties. And these were the duty of fidelity, the duty to advocate, the duty to prepare and investigate, and the duty to communicate. So the duty to, of fidelity to the client was really to understand the client's um, goals and to execute them. So um, if the client wanted to maintain his or her innocence, then the public defender should be faithful to that and should um, go and take all steps to uh, prepare for trial and, and represent their client. The duty to advocate the client's goals is closely related to that, but part of that was really to tell the client's story, tell the client's side of events. Um, and the duty to prepare and investigate was to prepare the case well, um, to use emotions, but also to investigate the um, prosecutor's side of events um, and not to take them at face value. And then finally, the duty to communicate was all about uh, taking the client's instructions and explaining to the client the process, um, explaining to them what would be happening in court, what would be happening in, at the trial, or what would be happening at the sentence hearing. And from these domains, we developed a number of questions. Um, so, for instance, uh, questions uh, such as, or statements, such as the culture of my court prevents me from putting my client first. Um, or sometimes it is necessary to put my own personal needs above those of my clients. And each of these statements um, were scored according to a Likert scale from a strongly disapprove, disapprove, neutral, strongly agree, and uh, agree and strongly agree. So there was a five part scale. Uh, that they would then record. And I think there were about uh, 40 questions in total um, that we asked the public defenders and uh, their clients. And so um, how did we then um, test these instruments? Well, first, after understanding the domains and coming up with the questions, the first thing we did was that we did some cognitive testing. So I went out to four public defender offices and um, administered the survey uh, with 20 public defenders. I administered the client survey with 20 um, people who had been represented by Gideon's trained public defender. And the purpose of the cognitive testing was really to make sure that um, the language that we used was comprehensible uh, to the respondents. And particularly with the clients, we wanted to make sure that we weren't using um, research language or legal language that they wouldn't understand, that we'd framed the questions in a way that was comprehensible to them. Um, and after we had completed the cognitive testing, uh, we then administered uh, the survey uh, to a sample of about 140 public defenders and around just over 100 uh, clients. And at this point, I want to now just talk about the public defender instrument, the Defender Values Spectrum Survey, and talk about the validity and reliability testing that we undertook. 
Firstly, reliability testing is all about ensuring that the public defender instrument could be used repeatedly to produce uh, and provide consistent results. So it's a bit like a thermometer reliability testing, uh, that if you put a thermometer in a pan of boiling water, it would always record 100 degrees Celsius. And if you put it in a pan of ice, it will always uh, record zero degrees Celsius. So that's all about uh, consistency. Um, validity testing was to ensure that the uh, Defender Value Spectrum Survey was capable of measuring what it was designed to measure. In other words, that it was, it was measuring um, uh, the values-based uh, public defense. And in this case, um, validity testing is like uh, a scale, uh, a weight scale. Um, you use a weight scale to measure your own weight. Um, but, and it will always, and that's what it does, it, it measures weight. You don't use it to measure distance or to measure temperature. It's just there designed to measure weight. So we wanted to make sure that the Defender Value Spectrum Survey was measuring uh, the notions and domains of the values-based public defense. So the first thing that we did uh, was we undertook the first stage of reliability testing. Um, and in this, we used a statistical test known as Cronbach's Alpha. Um, Cronbach's Alpha is a coefficient alpha developed by the statistician Lee Cronbach in the 1950s. And as I said in the introduction, it measures reliability or internal consistency. So for example, a company might give a job satisfaction survey to their employees. And a high reliability means that it's measuring job satisfaction, while a low reliability means that it's measuring something else or possibly nothing at all. And Cronbach's alpha tests are very, um, a very good way of measuring multiple question Likert, sale, uh, Likert scale surveys. Um, and so that's what we did here. There's a rule of thumb that um, uh, any score on the alpha, alpha Cronbach's alpha above 0 0.7 means that the instrument is generally reliable. And this slide showed us that overall, the Defender Value Spectrum Survey as an instrument uh, scored 0 0.86. That's above the 0 0.7 um, score of acceptability, and we we're very happy with that. But when we looked at the five individual domains, the fundamental values and the four duties, we saw that the, um, the, individual, the scores for these individual elements fell well short of the um, 0 0.7 rule of thumb. But we were happy that overall, uh, the instrument was working. So then we turned to the um, validity testing and we used a uh, factor analysis that uh, mapped the five domains against five other factors. And the analysis was to determine which questions from each of the domains loaded onto which factors. And ideally a question should only load to one factor and it should have a very regular Pattern. So ideally, the questions in under the fundamental values should load very neatly onto factor one, and the questions within the duty of fidelity to clients' goals should map very neatly into factor two. But as you'll see from uh, this uh, chart here, the loading was um, much less um, had much less of a pattern, and. Um, and there were some questions illustrated in grey on the right hand of the figure that just weren't loading onto any factor at all. So in step one, as I said, there were five questions and they're, they're shown here and um, uh, they just didn't load onto anything and we considered that these questions were redundant and would be removed from the analyses. So then we went back and uh, we did stage two of the validity testing. And we found um, 
that the questions of, were loading much better to individual factors and that there was a more regular pattern of loading. It wasn't perfect, uh, but the questions seemed to be loading on the, uh, on the different factors in a much more regular pattern. However, if you look closely on the left-hand side of the chart, the domains are very different. Uh, rather than having the fundamental values and the four values, there are new domains called casework practice, views on professional role, client relationships, and workplace resource and support. And we inferred these, um, these domains from the way in which the questions were loading and the way in which they were grouped. And this provide us, provided us with an alternative structure for the domains. So uh, this slide here shows you that we updated the reliability testing using these new domains. And as you can see, overall, um, the survey instrument uh, maintained its good score of 0 0.86. But the new domains um, had generally had scores above 0 0.7, which was the acceptable threshold, apart from one, the workplace resource and support, which scored 0 0.69. But we felt that that was sufficiently close to, to be of no concern. I think when we're talking about um, this scientific testing, of validity and reliability testing, um, I hope that you see that it's not a, an absolute science, that one has to um, use a little bit of qualitative judgment, um, to use a little bit of the art of understanding what it is you're measuring, um, and um, to make sure um, that that is understood and that you're not just driven by the data. Um, this slide here begins to explain how you could come up with alternative domain structures. Um, as I said, the original domains, the fundamental values and the four um, duties, uh, were very much uh, derived from the theory of change work. So there was a basis for those. Uh, but then we changed them um, when we did the analyses because we could infer a different structure. Now, I don't think either is right or wrong. I think it's rather like um, playing cards. Uh, and it really is like arranging a deck of cards into different hands. So, for example, if you're playing uh, a game of cards that um, is based on using matching cards, like Go Fish, where you might want to be getting all kings in your hand, um, then that's one way of playing cards. Uh, and a different way might be to play a whist-type uh, game where cards are arranged by, by suit. Um, all the spades in this case. Uh, neither uh, game is right or wrong, it's just a, a different game. Uh, so while the theory of change suggested the original domains, the revised structure, I think, brought the analyses closer to what was in the minds of the public defenders. Uh, and that was a good structure uh, to use. So the overall findings from this case study was that the defender values spectrum survey spectrum, sorry, the Defender Value Spectrum Survey was a reliable instrument that we could be sure that if a public defender took the questionnaire several times, the same results would be recorded. We also felt that it was valid, that it was capable of measuring the domains that it was designed to measure. Um, and that people with the same values will tend to share the same responses to different questions. Um, so, so that was, that was the overall findings. And again, I do find that the alternative domain structure was helpful to understand uh, what was perhaps going on in the minds of the respondents. So finally, the last word, if at first you don't get the survey results you want on your first survey, get mad and tear it up. Well, I don't think that's quite the case. Um, I think the designing of surveys um, is, uh, there's a good process to that, uh, which I hope you've, uh, you've, I've outlined to you. Um, everything goes back to a, a good theory of change and a logic model. Um, understanding the domains, but being willing to be 
flexible and um, uh, reflective about how the domains might be arranged uh, to make sure your questions are understood um, by the respondents and then to do the validity and reliability testing. Well, I hope that you've enjoyed uh, this presentation. Um, I know that there were some hands going up in the course of it, so uh, we'll now stop and um, take some questions, please. Thank you very much.